This is a film about Iran. Are you slightly concerned that at the moment, because of IS and so forth, Iran is being lined up to be our next new ally? Uh, and this film is, is kind of... It's, it, it speaks to the, the incoherence of uh, uh, our policies over the last 10 or 15 years and, and uh, the changing alliances and uh, the strategies of uh, we must take on ISIS without necessarily weakening Assad while bringing in uh, allies that have been enemies but also being friendly to Iraq. It's, it's, it it yeah. just shows you the, uh, the ramifications of some of our coherence. I always say we should bring uh, more of a Spotify mentality to America. <laughs> you, you, oh, you've been, you've been listening. You've been <laughs> listening. Mazia, it must be a very strange experience, not only have, to have gone through the terrible things you underwent, but also to then see it on film. And I wondered, I mean, of course, it's a film, it's not reality. Was this a very accurate account of, of life for you inside Evin Prison and what happened to you? Um, first of all, it's very nice to be with the most trusted man on British television enough already, and enough most trusted man on American television in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, too much trust in television. Trust. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the film is not really about me. It is inspired by my story. It's based on my book. But it's about my colleagues in Iran, in Egypt, in Russia, in China. Thousands of journalists who you know go through the same thing. And also, the film is a celebration of family, culture, things that are important to people. And of to dancing. You. Can you dance to Leonard Cohen as well as the actor? <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the criteria artistic license. for guys. There is, a, there is exactly. artistic license a great, a great in terms of the moves. When I watched this uh, film in the cinema, John, there was a huge round of applause and laughter when um, it was said that um, the, the, the character said, um, if the CIA are backing Newsweek, they've got the wrong, they've got the wrong horse. Yes. It's the end of the old yes. press, the end of the old media. Correct. And the film makes a great deal of the rise of, of the, new, the new media and, and, right. and so forth. Do you, do you regard this business we're involved in now, as well as the newspapers on the table, as being in kind of ineluctable and terminable decline? Well, uh, it, it's not so much that, that I regard them as such as, as that they are. Uh, it, it's, it's not even so much that. It's that technology has democratized the idea of bearing witness and who it is that uh, can take on the role. You know, and as you see uh, uh, the shrinking of, of corporate media, and this is especially in the United States, in terms of their international reach. That role is being taken on by individuals, bloggers and activists within these countries. So the more authoritarian regimes, the regimes that are trying to suppress information uh, about themselves that they don't want to get out, now have to find you know, uh, these various points. They need to crack down on thousands of people mm. uh, where it used to be a much a smaller few, a and few. controllable. And you see now that that apparatus then has to become uh, even more oppressive in, in that regard. Now, I should explain that The Daily Show is how millions of Americans get their politics these days. All Americans. All Americans. Let's, now, the, let's, not, let's not pull punches <laughs> all right, here. All right, no. Now, um, part of the big problem that a lot of people have had with their disconnection with politics mm -hmm. is that um, the, the, uh, the public are not really interested in listening to politicians except occasional politicians Correct. talking at length. And so you bring in humor the whole time. Is there a danger that you were actually trivializing politics as a result? Uh, you know, it's, it, it's interesting. Politics does such a good job of trivializing itself that mm. I, I don't know that, you know, it's, it's interesting. There's always people always say to comedians, where do you draw the line? <laughs> yeah. uh, as though we are the ones that can cause the greatest damage to, to yeah. discourse and, 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 and those types of things. Okay, well, let, let's just yep. see where you draw the line. A very quick right. clip from the let's show, if we could. <laughs> Wait a minute, were we briefly not at war? <laughs> and I missed it? All right, let me, let me get back on network anchor war footing. I think this will do it. Okay, there we go. All right, we're back at war. Yeah! yeah! Who's the bad guy this time? Brilliant. Now, you're having a go at Fox News there, I strongly suspect. Um, the Ron Burgundy of, of your own show there. Yes, uh, I believe that is correct. Uh, we have a tendency to appreciate the symbolic gesture over yeah. the substantive gesture yeah. uh, in, in the States. And I, and I think in, in most areas, especially when uh, war is coming.
Mm. Now, because The Daily Show is so well known, Mazia, that helped the, the film Rosewater to get made, I think, didn't it? And therefore, you've had a kind of... Because you appeared on The Daily Show very early on, and that was then picked up by the Iranian authorities because a joke about you being a terrorist was then picked yeah, up unfortunately, completely the Iran, un, Yeah, Unfortunately, un the Iranian government does, is not famous for its sense of humor. <laughs> so when they arrested me and they were throwing these outlandish charges at me that I was spying for the CIA, for MI6, for Mossad, and for Newsweek, right. they had to come up with some sort of evidence. And in the absence of any evidence, because I was not a spy, they showed me a clip of my appearance on The Daily Show. And they yeah. said, see, you're saying that you're a spy on this show, so you're a spy. Yeah. 